Tom Cruise and Top Gun, Maverick, had all the right moves. Is that a risky business reference? I think so. The long-awaited sequel brought in $124 million in its first three days. It's a record debut for Cruise and for the Memorial Day weekend. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness fell into second place with $16.4 million and a domestic total of $375 million. That's the highest of any film released in 2022 so far. <coughs> Pardon me. The Bob's Burgers movie began its run. It cooked up $15 million for a third place debut. Downtown Abbey, a new era, fell to the fourth spot on ticket sales of $5.9 million. The bad guy stayed in the top five, making off with $4.6 million. Fans of the Orville have been waiting since 2019 for a new season of Seth MacFarlane's sci-fi series, which arrives this Thursday on Hulu. CNN's Rick Damagella has a preview of it. We're about to enter unexplored space. I know you're all just as excited as I am, so let's give this everything we got, and may the force be with you. How was that? Perfect. Delayed by the pandemic, the crew of the USS Orville set course for a new home base on Hulu and a new name for its third season, the Orville New Horizons. Definitely worth the wait. We've been working on this thing for a long time. We started shooting in Statue of an Emperor. fall of 2019. It's been a mountain to climb. It's going to suck if people don't like it because it's <laughs> but I'm I'm optimistic that we're the fans are going to be pretty happy. I, I don't know that there is anything quite like this on television to date as far as the the scope the hulu situation really allowed us to take time and more time and and more money and you really see it it comes out in in all of the action exploration always carries risk i say we risk it we've fallen in love with these characters and like it's like we're experiencing their stories on a deeper level and funny is there for everyone like don't get me wrong, there's tons and tons of humor in this third season. But what there is also is that there's a level of you learning about, like you feeling like these characters on a deeper, deeper level. And that comes with a tone of seriousness. Here's to a better future. And I will be sure to bring my, what does Lieutenant Malloy call it? My A-game. There you go, buddy. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Looks interesting. It does. From handcrafted wooden games, speaking of interesting, from handcrafted wooden yard games to Legos to locally brewed beer, Mike and Fiona are featuring some veteran-owned businesses today on SA Live. It is a Military City special for Memorial Day. Hey, guys. Well, we have got a full show on this Memorial Day, and of course, we are paying tribute to military personnel who have made the ultimate sacrifice fighting for our country. And usually folks on this, what used to be called Decoration Day, would decorate the road in blue, but we've got something a little bit different today. Yes, V Cruz from Forever Pedals by V tells us why we are making this particular craft today. Yes, and it's going to be our Red Remembrance Poppy Flower, and you'll learn more about why it's uh, significant for Memorial Day. Okay, very good. And Long Tap Brewing Company, a local brewing owned by veteran and honoring Green Berets. Yes, and veteran-owned businesses are serving up a cross between American donuts and Japanese rice cakes. Wait till you see this. We have another veteran-owned business, Sunshine Woodworks. They're creating wooden yard games. These are great gifts for Father's Day. And of course, hey, if you love Legos, this is a Lego collector's dream. We check out San Antonio Plastic Bricks, which is also owned by a veteran. Always fun to play with those and just take them from your kids. So, all right, beef loving Texans, Caribbean Burger. Wow, that sounds really good. For more grilling ideas from the pros, everything you need to know how to make the perfect burger. And you're gonna hear a great tune from country musician and army veteran, Chuck Weimer. And a whole lot more coming up on this Memorial Day edition of SA Live. Stick around. Right now on KSAT.com, artist San Antonio native and Trinity alumnus Donald Moffitt has partnered with the McNay Art Museum for an interactive exhibit that shines a light on nature. Now, the artist's first ever collaboration with the McNay features abstract sculptural designs. If you'd like some tickets and some more information, all you gotta do is visit the McNay's website. We have a link on our website, ksat.com. And it's hot out there. We're sitting at 91 degrees right now. We're gonna be up around 97 this afternoon. 
Gusty winds, a big deal. We'll have gusts 25 to maybe even 30 miles per hour. The current heat index is 94, so we are going to be dealing with a heat index today that 97 is going to feel a little bit more like 100, I think, by this afternoon. 97 tomorrow, we do it all again. Gusty winds, humidity, heat index, uh, really all the way through the end of the week before it gets a little drier, I think, Friday, Saturday into Sunday, but that drier air lends itself to some Hotter temperatures, 98 on Saturday, 99 on Sunday. So a very quiet and unfortunately dry forecast, guys. So sorry you have to deliver that forecast, Justin. It is a Memorial Day special. They're featuring veteran-owned businesses on SA Live. It starts right now. Today on SA Live, a patriotic project you can do with the kids or with your friends at home. A veteran-owned brewery here in San Antonio, how they honor Green Berets with their brews. And a summer burger recipe that will whisk you away to the islands without ever leaving Military City, USA. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Well, it's Memorial Day Monday. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorostiza. And I'm Mike Osterhage. And of course, Memorial Day is a, about a whole lot more than just having an extra day off over the weekend. Of course, it is honoring those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, given their lives in service of our country. And if you're looking for a creative way to show your American pride and pay respects to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, our first guest can really help with that. V Cruz, owner of Forever Pedals by V, is here to show us a patriotic project you can do with the whole family and the meaning behind these beautiful paper flowers, you know what I mean, that you see behind us right here. First of all, good afternoon. Yeah. Yes, good, good afternoon. Good to see you. All right, Thank Memorial Day, a lot of people think decorating with red, white, and blue, which, yes, is wonderful, but this is something different that many people may be familiar with. Correct. So this is the red poppy flower. It is a resemblance flower that was adopted by the U.S. in September of 1920 to resemble, it's the national symbol and a rem for the remembrance flower for those that we've lost um, in, and made the ultimate sacrifice. All okay. right, how do we get started? So first, um, typically poppies were made initially with silk. So as a paper florist, we're gonna incorporate cardstock paper flower. Mm -hmm. So in order to create them, you're gonna need 65 pound cardstock. I've already pre-cut your petals for you all. Thank and you. And it's just a matter of assembling these four petals to create the poppy flower. And so, I noticed that you've got a slice kind of in each one, right? Yes, yeah, so initially, they they, become, they just start with your red cardstock paper mm -hmm. and you want to use a pattern which I do have available and it's, a, it's uh, something that you can purchase through my Etsy shop but I do full video tutorials over on my Facebook page to show you the step-by-step -step processes to do all of these flowers. Okay so great uh, for the kids if uh, yes. they're doing you know the, the little uh, fine motor skills cutting out the, the paper. Of and course absolutely a great way to even for a lot of uh, um, you know, the summer coming up, you mm -hmm. know, doing a lot of these craft projects. So okay. uh, you just simply take your petals. This is a fairly simple process. You're going to take two of your petals and you're just going to glue them right on top of each other just on the bottom ends. Right, just a, right yeah, across a small each other? amount of glue, not too much, Mike. Okay. You hear that? <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure I just did too much. Probably, probably okay. so. Right okay, there? So like Correct. That. All right. Okay. And then you're just going to simply take these two petals and they're going to go the op opposite. Opposite. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Put them in just like that. And this, uh, not quite as much here in the United States, but uh, in Britain and you said some other European countries. Yeah, they? the UK, Belgium, New Zealand do um, use poppy flowers for their Remembrance Day, which is our Veterans Day, November 11th. Okay, and you said last Friday was actually National Poppy Day. Yep, National Poppy Day is the Friday prior to Memorial Day. I did not know that. All and this I, is easy enough for a beginner yeah. to do, right? Of course. I of mean, course. as you can see, <laughs> all right, because we are definitely beginners. I don't think we've graduated yet no. to the next level. And the little circle okay. goes in the middle then? Um, yes, yeah, so you can put that in the middle just for additional He's support. Such a go getter. Okay. Yes. Look at him going on. Um, I remember, and I don't know if you all do, my parents had always referred to Memorial Day as Decoration Day because, of course, folks would decorate, put flags, whatever, on the, in the headstones right. in, in cemeteries yes. for the fallen. 
Okay. Okay. And, and how long have you been creating, of course, these beautiful <laughs> paper flowers? Um, I've been creating these flowers uh, as far as large paper flowers since 2015. Um, it wasn't until 2017 that I decided to start teaching the craft and doing full tutorials, offering you know in-person workshops here locally. Um, we haven't got back into that just yet, but you can definitely find full tutorials on my Facebook page. Okay, and then instructions on how to make the, the center of it as well? Yep, everything um, is provided on the tutorials and it's all with cardstock. Oh, blew that down. <laughs> Bigger spot of glue right there. I was okay. so concerned with small, just a little bit of glue, just a little bit of glue, but this one's a little heavier because of that flower yes. on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. you have all, I mean, you can, any flower you can think of, you have got the pattern for it, I think. And Pretty much, yes. There's so many ways that you can incorporate these paper flowers. Um, I have numerous patterns available um, that you can just simply download. They're just downloadable okay. right from your home, and then you can start creating right away. How Let's talk about these that? patriotic yeah. flowers behind us and yes. their meaning. Um, I actually began to create these in 2016. 18 or yeah 2018 um, it was suggested by some of my viewers and supporters on my page and I decided to just go with it so the red white and blue I typically do a week and I call it patriotic paper flower week over on my page and so all week we make these um, beautiful red, white, and blue flowers. And the, the cardstock is thick enough. If you, uh, say, put this in a, a garbage bag or something like that, and you can put it in a closet, it's going to stay pretty, pretty good yes. for next year, right? That's correct. You okay. can reuse them, just keep them in a safe place, out of the heat, of course, but you'll be, you'll be fine to reuse them. All Great. right. There Thank are classes, there are templates for other holidays, so all you have to do for more information on Forever Petals by V is just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. Thank you. Well, it's a veteran-owned business serving up a cross between, get this, American donuts and Japanese rice cakes. <laughs> That's right. One of my favorites was the K-Dog. It's a new place to try out for summer treats. Well, if American Donuts and Japanese rice cakes had a baby, I'm telling you, you're looking at it right there, it would be these mochi nuts. And joining us to talk about them is owner Chang Tan and Rebecca Mueller. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This looks incredibly delicious. So who came up with the mochi nut? So mochi nut is originated from uh, Hawaii in the Japanese populations. And my friend, he brought all the recipe to the stateside in California. That's how everything started. Mm and it's been so popular, right? Yes. So you're going to show us how to glaze. We both have our setups here, right, Rebecca? Yeah. So, okay, so tell us how do we do this. Alrighty, so first we got to mix the bowl. So if y'all want to mix it, we can just mix the icing a little bit mm -hmm. to make sure that it's soft enough for the mochi nut mm -hmm. to be on there. Okay. Then you want to just pick up the mochi nut just straight up like that. And then you can just drop it in the icing. And it's still holding. Yeah. It. No, you, you can just let go. Let it go. It's all right. <laughs> and then you can just like push it down just a little okay. bit. So you want to just do kind of like that. And then you'll do that again. You'll just pick it right back up. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Woo. Yeah. Dance. And then you'll just shake it in like dance. a circle. Like do a little dance. All right. Got it, got it, got it. All righty. And then you'll just shake it from side to side a little bit to get all the icing off. And then you just want to shake it in like a circle again. Just Watch try to get it. more of that icing off. Okay. Yeah. And then once most of the icing is off, so you just want to shake it off a little bit more, you can just flip <laughs> it up like that. Okay. Just like turn it like Ready? that. Yeah. Cool. And then you just want to go in like a little circle. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. So you all yeah. like this in your job? Yeah. You don't like yeah, exactly. I'm going to call it good now. I know. I like it. So now that it's all like smooth on top, yes. you can yes. just put it down. It's time to decorate. Okay. Oh. So you're going to choose like whatever kind of toppings you'd like. We have a variety here. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so how would you describe the taste? So it tastes delicious. I love them. I eat them every day. <laughs> so That's instead, the correct answer. Yeah. yeah, so instead of like your regular yeast rice donut, mm -hmm. they're going to be made with the ingredients of mochi, which makes them like more crispy on the outside and soft and chewy and fluffy on the inside. Nice. Oh, okay. Right. And what flavors do you guys offer? Um, so we change our flavors every single day. We have a total of six flavors we offer a day, and we change them every single day. Every single day? Yeah. Yes. Oh, but look how gorgeous. They are. Yes. Is there one? Yes. Is there something that's consistent every? Is there a flavor yeah, that's we have there? a churro flavor every single day. Oh, okay. I'm so, yeah. so I'm fitting. staring at my creation here. Sorry. <laughs> well, we're gonna taste this here, but tell me about what you have over there. We have the, the Korean hot, uh, hot dogs. Mm -hmm. 
and it's got a really nice cheese inside with the mozzarella cheese. So that is a Korean rice flour hot dog yes. or K-Dog for short, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And cool look nickname. at the look cheese. Look at that cheese. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness, the cheese pool. That yes. is so, so you can order so this different good. ways, right, Rebecca? Yeah, so we have Uber, Grubhub, and DoorDash that you can order our mochi nuts from. For K-Dogs, you do have to be in-store to order those, so mm -hmm. they can be fresh and you can get that really that good cheese, cheese pool. Yeah, the cheese yes. pool, yes. You gotta have that. And tell people where you're located. Oh yeah, so we have two locations, one on Days of All and one on Stone Oak. Mm -hmm. Right. And veteran-owned business, right? Yes, 14 years, still in the service. Thank you so much. Air Force, right? Yes, yeah. thank, thank you. you. for your service. And you have a one-year anniversary coming up in August. You're planning yes. a big party? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to keep it a surprise for now. Okay. But when you check out our Instagram, we'll definitely keep you updated with that. Okay. And folks can order how? Yeah, you can order through Grubhub, Uber Eats, DoorDash, or you can come in and order. But for our K-Dogs, that's in-store only, so you get that really yes. good cheese pull. And you want to yeah, see the dance. Yeah. 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 yeah, The mochi nut dance. All right. Thank you. Guys. Of course, Days Thank of All Road, Stone Oak Parkway, mm -hmm. right? Your locations. Yes. One more time. All right. For more information on mochi nut, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the Ask Seen on SA Live tab, or just scan that QR code on your screen. Still ahead on the show, wooden yard games made by hand, and this veteran business owner is selling out fast for Father's Day. Plus, grab a cold one and salute a Green Beret. How this local brewing company honors the history, culture, and veterans of U.S. Army Special Forces. That's next on SA Live. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. It's a veteran-owned brewery which honors the history, culture, and veterans of U.S. Army Special Forces or Green Berets. And the owner of Long Tab Brewing Company, David Holland, joins us to talk about what they've got brewing for summer. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so Thanks first for off, me back. yes, and, you know, and of course, thank you again for your service. Thirty years in Special Forces, right? Yep, that's right. All right. That's right. Okay. So, what did you bring today? Uh, a myriad of things. Uh, we start here on the uh, on your left. Because this right. is your current lineup, right? Well, yes. We've and lined no. them up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is our current lineup for today. But these are two dedication beers uh, that we've done for Fallen Green Berets. Um, we've since sold out of both of those. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's one of the things that we do to raise money for charity mm -hmm. is we honor Green Berets that have given their life in service to our country. And uh, these two in particular, it wasn't planned that way, it just ended up that way. These two in particular, uh, Javier Gutierrez and Mike Simpson are actually from San Antonio. Uh, one was a seventh group uh, Green Beret and another guy was a first group Green Beret. Okay, and of course, all honored, all honored, of course, and uh, you know, raises money for charity. Yep. Um, uh, and all of your beers, you know, they have a, you know, kind of a special story, right, and, and a tie to history. Yeah. yeah. Every one of them, if you was, if you were to run like a like an ancestry.com on all of our beer names, they would all tie together. Uh, it all has the shared history. Uh, and in fact, uh, this or in June. Uh, June uh, 19th of this year marks the 70th anniversary of the inception of Special Forces. Wow, 70 years. 70 years. Okay. That's uh, a lot so of history to pull beer names from. That's a lot of history from. to pull beer names from, <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, tell us about your latest brew. Uh, so these are the latest ones. Um, we've got um, uh, this one that we released last week. Uh, it's called Red Empire. Uh, it's an impure red that honors uh, the Seventh Special Forces Group, primarily they're Central and South America and the Caribbean. Um, and then this one, uh, it's called Dead A, it's for Detachment A. And it was a unit that actually served in Berlin, uh, in Germany, uh, during, the, during the late Cold War. And then this one uh, is a special beer called DOL, which stands for Deal Presley Bear, and that's the motto of Special Forces. So is there a you know, more popular one? They're all great. They're all great. I like that. Okay. And you started brewing after your wife purchased a beer kit, right? That's right. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, so she was recovering from cancer, couldn't get out to buy me a gift for Father's Day, and so she bought a beer kit, and then I started brewing. 
and uh, and so just kind of got hooked on it and then long story short we decided to turn it into a business so but unfortunately I don't I don't get to brew really anymore um, uh, our head brewer Mike Brown is uh, he's also from seventh group and uh, so he does all of our brewing now and does an amazing job more than beer of course tell us about your menu uh, so we have a full, full service kitchen. I mean, it's pretty small, but uh, but it's it's pretty versatile. Uh, I've got an amazing chef, um, and uh, he does some fantastic work. I mean, we've got great staff that really works hard. I mean, it's it's a really tiny kitchen. You know, it's probably not any bigger than this. Yes. And uh, but he pulls miracles out like every every week. Uh, we also serve coffee and we also serve wine too. Uh, do you have and you when you say he make you know the chef makes miracles happen are, what are some of your favorites that have come through oh uh, well it, you know every weekend um, he will um, he'll come up with a new special and uh, that that special is typically something uh, German or mm -hmm. Belgian inspired because we do a lot of Belgian and German beers and um, this is a. Here, I'll let you have this one. Oh, thank you so much. So this is a. This is a 10% Belgian Golden Strong. Okay, here so, we go. Salute. Salute. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's good. Okay. And of course, yep. you will be closed on Memorial Day, right? We are closed on Memorial Day. Um, we, um, you know, we th we believe that you know Memorial Day is a day of remembrance. Mm -hmm. uh, you can certainly celebrate. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but uh, yeah, for us, we'll be closed in remembrance okay. of those who gave all. And where tell folks how they can find you. Uh, so we are 4700 Timco West, Suite 105. We're just uh, 410 in Bandera, just right inside the loop. Right. And uh, we're in a little a little place called Timco Business Park. So you can't miss us. We've got about a 30-foot sign on the front of our building. And folks can order online, order to go? Uh, they can order online. Uh, they can order for pickup, to go, you know, with whatever, whatever they prefer. Okay, perfect. So. Thank you so much, David Holland. Yeah. All right, for more information on Long Tab Brewing Company, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, where we've provided a link, or just snap that QR code on your screen. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. We have a lot of uh, family cookouts and barbecues at the house and friends over. Uh, we needed a little bit more entertainment in the backyard. Uh, so I went online and I Googled family entertainment, backyard fun. Uh, I learned real, real quick on how to build a Jenga set and a washer set out of the minimal tools that I had. Long story short, I just started making games. I figured out that they do sell. And next thing I know, uh, I have business cards, social media pages, and um, yeah, a, a pretty good following. <laughs> Hector Santiago is making a name for himself, creating backyard games with a custom touch. It's a hobby he started back in 2016, growing into a business he proudly calls Sunshine Woodwork. Um, so my mom used to sing us Sunshine, You Are My Sunshine, uh, every night before bed, me and my little brother. Uh, so I still do the same thing with my kids and keeping it as, you know, a family business and trying to, you know, teach them along the ways and maybe one day they can, you know, take the reins and keep the tradition going of Sunshine Woodworks. Uh, it was easy to just to pick Sunshine Woodworks and the name itself just means a lot to, to, to myself and my kids. I am a veteran. Uh, I did do, I spent 13 years active duty in security forces in the United States Air Force. I am still in the reserves. And if you're wondering what the best part about this experience is for Santiago. Favorite part, to be completely honest, is the, uh, the customer's reaction, the responses I get. I think that's the best part. Coming out here and being able to tinker with all this stuff, definitely therapeutic. Uh, it's good to get away. Not necessarily get away, but just like come out here and just like, it's kind of like my zen type stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I just enjoy doing it. 
Uh, we make Jenga in two different sizes. We have Jumbo and we have Junior. Your Jumbo is going to be your standard size that you would see at any kind of restaurant uh, or bar or brewery. Uh, and your Junior size is uh, going to be a little bit more kid friendly. Uh, it's a little bit more lighter and a little bit more easier to move around. And we also make washers, three hole and one hole. Uh, we make ladder golf and hook and ring and Yahtzee. Santiago takes his orders online through his social media pages, but he also has inventory available off Main Street in Bernie. The good things about the, the, the yard games that we make, um, they're year-round. They're for any occasion. They're good for uh, anything for a gift. They're good for a Father's Day gift. They're good for a birthday gift. They're good for a Christmas gift. Uh, they're also good for any kind of tailgating. Um, you've got, you know, around here, your river trips. You've got camping. Um, a lot of popular anything outdoors, this can do. This is just one of many veteran-owned businesses in and around San Antonio that you can show support for. Uh, we've had quite a few uh, good ratings uh, on our Facebook page. Those are the things that, that keep me going. For SA Live. Ultimately, I, I could see this being my retirement plan. I mean, just something to keep me busy whenever I'm retired. I'm Jen Tobias Dresky. And if you want to get your Father's Day order in, do it now because he's already getting full on orders. And again, you can order through his Facebook or Instagram page, but you can also find him at 222 Main Street. There's shops there. You can go buy something for, for dad or any occasion. For more, of course, on Sunshine Woodworks, all you have to do is head to our website, click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code you see on your screen. Our dear friend Shailene McNeil, oh, beef loving Texans, registered dietitian. Oh, if you could just smell right here. At least the griddle is still working. Good great. afternoon. How are you? I am great. It's awesome to be here today. You know, and everybody has the best burger recipe, but there is certainly a technique to cooking the perfect burger, right? Well, and there's no other expert than beef loving Texans to show exactly. you. I mean, your go to expert for all things beef. And we're going to show you some really fun ways because May 28th is National Beef Burger Day. And I think burgers, as a, you know, I'm a dietitian. I think burgers kind of get a bad rap sometimes for being mm. indulgent. So we're going to actually plus up all of our burgers. We've got high quality protein and zinc and iron with our beef. And then we're going to add really fresh and nutritious sides and toppings to really make a delicious burger. So what kind of beef yeah, as far as the fat content? Yeah. Right so what I like to do is I always promote using lean ground beef where you can. But for my burger, I like a little bit less lean. I go with about 85% lean ground beef. And that's going to make a nice juicy burger. When I make tacos and spaghetti, I do 90% lean or leaner. About a pound of ground beef, a good rule of thumb, when you buy one pound of ground beef, that's going to give you about four patties. So you want a quarter pounder patty, uh, a pound of ground beef, four patties. And the shrinkage is going to be, you lose about uh, an ounce per you, burger? Yeah, you lose about an ounce for every four okay. ounces that you cook, but it's still a delicious, satisfying burger. So a pound is a good rule of thumb for it's four burgers. It's still a good portion. Really satisfying. Okay. 25 grams of protein in one three ounce serving of beef. So loads of satisfying protein. Now what I did here is I added some Caribbean beef seasoning. We're going to do an island twist on this burger Ooh, that you're doing that here. Good. And I don't want to over mix my ground beef. I just want to get that seasoning through there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start making some patties. Well, Mike, if you want to just take that mango salsa and throw it together. Okay, so what we've have got we got here? Fresh mango, a little lime juice, a little cilantro and green onions and fresh jalapenos. Ooh, that just toss good. that together. This could not be any easier. Burgers only take a few minutes on the grill and I'm just making my patties. Another tip I like to use is take my thumb and make a little indention in my patty and that helps the burger stay uh, keep from shrinking up too much. This is sort of a little tip. So it, if you make them kind of fatter and smaller, they'll shrink a lot they more, They tend to right? shrink a little more. And so I like, and they'll still shrink some, and that's yeah. perfectly fine. But I like to put it doing that little thumb tip, okay. and uh, that helps kind of keep that from happening. Okay, now with this salsa, obviously you don't have any cheese on there. If you were to put cheese with this, what would you pick for a cheese? I love a pepper jack cheese with this. Ooh, I think that would be, that really, would be really good. good. You kind of got spicy and sweet going. Mm -hmm. And one of those burgers are probably ready. One of the tips right. I like to remind folks to do is you want to cook your burgers until the juices are clear, but color isn't a good indication for a burger. You can't just break it off and look and see. So you want like to make, we all do when yeah, you dig a hole in resist there. that urge, use a thermometer. Beef Loving Texans has all the temperature ingredients. When it comes to burgers, you want to do 160 degrees. Uh, and what you want to do is put that thermometer right in the 
center of that burger. You don't want to let it touch the grill and get a false reading. So okay. right in the center, super easy, so delicious. And you're adding these toppings here. That one looks like it's about done. And we were talking earlier, Mike, about how don't resist the urge to like over flip your burger. Look, that is just looking so delicious. Okay. Love that mango. Now, topping. also, it is going to cook a little bit once you take it off the grill. It does. Some of the residual and cooking. I still, I'll cook it to 160, pull it off. Right when it gets 160, I'll go ahead and pull off. It's going to heat up a little bit about the time that it takes you to gather your family together, get all <laughs> yes. the ingredients out. Everybody's burger is going to be perfect. Love these other ideas that we've right, got here, too. This is too. great. I love the pineapple slices over there. Yes, you know, a lot of people are looking for ways to include more fruits and vegetables in. How much fun is a grilled pineapple instead of a bun? You can do a Mediterranean-style little sliders that we've got there. We've got new research out that shows we know Mediterranean diet is a healthy way of eating. Uh, beef fits in a Mediterranean diet as well, and so we've added some Mediterranean ingredients like roasted peppers and arugula. So yummy. What do you think? Mm, okay. The spices in the meat, pardon me, from my mouth bulb. and then the salsa on top of that is absolutely fantastic. And it's fresh, and it, you know, mm -hmm. we're not adding a lot of calorie-laden sides and toppings, and we're getting more fruits and vegetables in, and that goes perfectly complements with a beef. Okay. What's the other burger you have over there that is This is so yummy. We have we're like a Mediterranean-themed style. So we have a little bit of cheeses, our beef that's going to pack up with iron and zinc and protein, roasted red peppers, arugula. You can add some olive oil or olives on this to get it that real Mediterranean flavor, the pineapple. You've got a fun burger bowl over there if you want to go low carb or just change things up a little bit. Think of it like a, uh, almost like a taco salad. Kind just of like. like a taco salad yeah. and it's a burger theme, but you can add whatever ingredients you have. Sometimes I'll do this when I'm cleaning out the fridge. I'll take a leftover burger the next day and make a salad or a bowl with what, uh, whatever I've got in the That's fridge. That's great because instead of taking, like a lot of people put sliced up steak on a salad, why not just why not a burger? burger like exactly. That? Bur bowls are real popular and it doesn't have to be salad. You could add rice or any of your veggies that you want in that. It's okay. Well, and all these great recipes are on beef loving Texans and not only the recipes but how to cook beef uh, to get that perfect taste. Thank you Shailene as always and for more information on beef loving Texans of course go to our website salive.com and click on the as seen on SA Live tab. loving Legos? Well, if so, there's a place in town you need to know about. I mean, they've got everything from Batman. I'm Batman. To Ghostbusters, to Star Wars, even the Titanic. <laughs> yes, and joining me right now is Ron Levisi, the owner of San Antonio Plastic Bricks. All right. Okay, how long did it take to build this Titanic? So this one was built with a, a dear friend of the company. She's been with us for a long time. She came in and we did 14 sessions of four hours each. And uh, she just wanted somebody to help build with her. So we had a blast building it over the course of two months. And here it is, 9,991 pieces. Was her name Rose? Close. It was <laughs> not Rose. That, that would have been good, though. Rose would have been good. Okay. So the cool thing about San Antonio Plastic Bricks is when you come in here, I mean, it is like a trip down memory lane. You have, you know, Legos here that are totally nostalgic, right? And also kind of rare. So you may not have everything, but you you probably have most of it. What am I holding right here? Oh, you're holding one of the the most common rare sets today. Uh, these are the the heads that LEGO came out with recently and the TIE Fighter helmet for some reason there's no reason for it but this is the super rare one right now there's a, a lot of them out there but this is the most sought after so uh, be careful because it's I, I, there's I'm 20 all, people I'm, waiting for it I'm, you know what <laughs> here we go okay I don't want you break it you buy it okay. you break it you build it <laughs> you build it I just have to build it again okay all right so tell me a little bit about everything you have here and how how it kind of came to be it started about 11 years ago. Uh, a buddy of mine called me up and said, hey, you want to help sort Lego with me? And we started selling pieces online. It was doing very well. Well, that led to a retail store. Uh, we weren't sure if it would work, so we signed a six-month lease with our landlord, and that lasted seven and a half years. And then the coolest part is we have the greatest customers uh, and some of the most unique requests ever. If, if you're having a bad day, just come hang out with us. We'll make you smile a little bit. And you were explaining a little bit earlier about kind of four different types of sets that you might find here, right? Absolutely.
absolutely. So we have the, the four sets you'll see here at San Antonio Plastic Bricks are like the ones on the wall, the sealed sets. Those are the ones you could get at Lego, Target, Walmart. Uh, no one's touched them. They came from the factory just like that. You'll be the first one to touch them. Uh, the second kind of set you'll see is uh, the, the display sets, the ones that somebody came in and traded just like that. We try to complete them best we can, but no promises, and we price them accordingly. Um, the third type of set you'll see would be in the box. Uh, we have verified every piece. We make sure it's all current. Uh, there's nothing missing. And we also guarantee it. If you buy a used set and it's not all there, you come see us, we'll make it right. And then the fourth set we have, something we're proud of. These are display sets that we've put in our own brown boxes. And once again, we verified every piece. If we're missing something, you come back and let us know, we'll make it right. So no box, but still a phenomenal set. Typically older in this case. All right, well, of course you can come here to shop. But you can also come here to party. I'm Batman. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> birthday parties, right? We do the best birthday parties in town. So you also have upcoming camps that in the summer, right? For we kids? do. Anytime the kids aren't in school, we have a camp. So tell folks how they can find you, where you're located, and of course your website. So we are at 903 East Bitters, Suite 305. Our website is sabricks.com. You guys just click with your customers. You just click. Uh, <laughs> you've been waiting all in. <laughs> <laughs> For all that information, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. I got four words for you. Pork belly burnt ends. Also known as bacon burnt ends, they're the delicious morsels of pork smoked until they're incredibly tender, thrown in barbecue sauce and honey until they're candy. It's basically pig candy. And today, I'm gonna show you how to make them. with Hardcore Carnivore Red, which is like my all-purpose pork seasoning, and it's gonna give these a killer all-natural color. As you can see, do not be shy with the seasoning. Once they're well coated, put them on a wire rack so the smoke can move all around them, and into the smoker they go. They're gonna cook for about two hours, and then we go to the next step. to make the sauce that are gonna turn those pork belly burnt ends from regular bacon into pig candy. So you need about a cup of barbecue sauce, and then we're gonna go in with about a half cup of chicken stock, mix that all together. And then we're gonna add in about a tablespoon of honey for some extra sweetness and shine. Of smoke, you can see that the fat started to render, they're starting to get crispy around the edges, and they've got that beautiful color. We're gonna put them into a big foil pan, pour over our delicious sauce, and then stud them with a couple pieces of butter for extra richness and because butter. Cover it with foil and back into the smoker for about one and a half hours. Once your pork belly has been foiled for about an hour and a half, we're gonna take the foil off and let all that goodness thicken up to become a sauce that'll coat them perfectly. If you're looking for one of the greatest things that you could ever eat, this is it right here. Pork belly burnt ends. A little love, a little smoke, a little bacon, a little hardcore carnivore red, a heck of a lot of flavor.
Well, thank you, of course, for watching SA Live. And of course, on this Memorial Day, a thank you to all who served. Yes, indeed. And we're going to leave you now with a song by local country musician and Army veteran Chuck Weimer. We'll see you tomorrow. Red barns and barbed wire Rolling down that old dirt road Was the only life I'd known Superstition sunrise Break it down, it's an interact Time like that I realize Everything's gonna be alright Looking back I wouldn't change it if I could I made a few mistakes But my life's pretty good And life throws you a curveball Gotta sit back on it, take your time, and then just swing away. Sometimes you strike out, don't let it stop you from stepping back up to the plate. Get in the box, take a breath, loosen up, and have a little fun. Find your pitch, let it ride, watch it fly when you hit life's own run. I was wearing green, traded in my old blue jeans. Give me a gun, give me a dog, then they shipped me overseas. All things come to an end. I made some real good friends. Some I see from time to time, and some I won't see again. Looking back, I wouldn't change it if I could. I made a few mistakes, but my life's pretty good. And life throws you a curveball. Gotta sit back on it, take your time, and then just swing away. Sometimes you strike out, don't let it stop you from stepping back up to the plate. Get in the box, take a breath, loosen up, and have a little fun. Find your pitch, let it ride, watch it fly when you hit life's own run. My share of foul, sometimes I didn't score. Every time I'd swing and miss, it made me want it that much more. Life throws you a curveball, gotta sit back on it, take your time, and then just swing away. Sometimes you strike out, don't let it stop you from stepping back up to the plate.